Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today I'm going to show you how to green screen on Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018. The techniques I'm going to show you are also applicable on previous versions of Premiere, so be sure to stick around and I'll show you just how to do it. Before we go ahead with the tutorial, a quick note about how I shot this opening scene. I've got a roll of green photographic paper behind me. Now, by the way, if you choose, you could also use blue and you can knock out the blue color in post-production rather than green. And the reason you might wanna choose green or blue is going to depend on the objects you have in the foreground. For example, if I'm wearing a blue top, it would be wise to use green in the background. And if I'm wearing a green top, I'd better use blue so as not to knock out the colors that are in the foreground accidentally. So you need to make that decision before you get into post-production. Having sorted that out, it's now time to consider your lighting. Now, if you have enough of a budget and enough physical space, you can run with a five light setup, which would allow you to dedicate lights to the background to produce the most even green behind you and have a number of lights on the foreground. However, if you have a small space and limited budget, you might only be able to use two lights. And that's what I'm actually working with today. I've got a light on the left and one on the right, and they're quite powerful, so they're enough to provide uh, adequate light on the subject matter and also on the background. However, because I've only got these two lights, if I move too close to my background, you'll see here behind me the shadows intensify. I don't have enough light behind me to knock those shadows out, so it's gonna make the job in post-production quite difficult. So what I've done to alleviate that problem is to move closer to the camera, and therefore you'll notice the shadows disperse, and it's gonna make it easier when I'm trying to knock the green out in post. So this is an example of a very simple green screen setup that you can put together at home at a very low cost. Now that we've seen that, we're ready to go ahead and check out how to knock out this green and replace it with a more interesting video clip in post-production using Premiere Pro. First of all, you need to import your footage, of course, and drag it onto the timeline. Once you've done that, before we go ahead and apply our key, I'm going to mask out the unnecessary parts of the video clip using my opacity mask. Now you don't have to do this for the key to work. It's just a step that I like to include because it often helps make the whole process of keying quicker and easier, especially if you do have a lot of shadows and artifacts from poor lighting. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my opacity mask in the effects control panel, and I'm going to use the pen tool and draw around the subject matter. I'm not going to go in too close here because there's going to be a fair bit of movement of the subject. So I'll allow a fair bit of space. But as you can see, I've just cut out the corners and the edges where the subject matter doesn't appear. That's gonna help me later on when I'm applying my key. Just a quick test, uh, I'll scrub along the timeline and just make sure that the subject matter isn't moving outside of the bounds of the mask I've just created. That's all good and now I'm ready to go. Let's get into the heart of the tutorial. Step number two, we're going to apply the ultra key and completely knock out the green layer altogether. So I'm going to go into my effects control panel and I'm going to drag the ultra key across onto my video footage, which is sitting on the top layer. Just beneath it is another layer of footage, which is going to act as my background layer. So the ultra key I'm dragging across and applying it to the top layer of video. And when I first do this, nothing changes. That's because I haven't yet chosen my key color. So on the left hand side in the effects controls, you'll see next to key color is an eyedropper tool. I'll select that and I'll now go and place my eyedropper on the video footage window to the right. Now I can try a number of different spots, especially if I have shadows, and see which area gives me the cleanest and most even result. So I'm going to select that little portion just above the top left hand corner of my head and uh, that's gonna be pretty much my basic key. What you'll notice now is a little bit of artifacting which we now need to clean up. There's a couple of ways to do this. First of all, the simplest way is to use the setting option in Ultra Key and change it to an aggressive key. And that will immediately clean everything up 
and give you a pretty decent looking key right from the outset. However, if you wanna apply more manual controls, I'll go back to default and I'll now change my view option in the output window from composite to alpha. And by doing this, you get a very clear picture of what's going on. If I now go into the drop down options in the ultra key, I'll start with map generation. I've got a few options here that are gonna clean up my mask. First of all, there's a transparency and usually the ultra key does a very good job of setting the right transparency. But as I lift that level up, you see that it starts to allow more of the foreground in which I don't want. So I've got to make sure I get to the point where it's at the absolute maximum without allowing any of the foreground to be included in the key. The next thing we can alter is the highlights and shadows. So we can play around with those a little bit to see what difference it makes. So I'm gonna just key out a little bit more of the shadow area. Then there's a tolerance level. And then the last one, which I find makes a big difference is the pedestal option, which tends to clean up the artifacting altogether. So I'm gonna lift that up to a much higher value from the 10 that it was given by default and go up to around 70 or 80. Now that I've done that, I can see some of the logo elements on my top shining through. So I'm just gonna change that transparency option again, and I'm gonna drop that down until I can no longer see that. And that's a very clean black and white key, which is exactly what you want. Once you've done that, you can toggle back to the composite view and you can see exactly how your key is going to work with your background footage. If I play a little bit of that along the timeline, there you go. As you can see in motion, the key looks very clean. The edges look great and we're pretty much there. Now that I see that with the background, I can see a little bit of artifacting, a little bit of the background coming through my top still. So I still haven't got the transparency right. I'll go into the transparency setting and adjust that down a little bit further. And now we've got a very clean key. Now there's a few other things that we can do to clean up the key. If you haven't got a result as clean as this, you can improve it with the matte cleanup tool. We'll come in a little bit more to get rid of any edging from the outer area of the subject matter and we can also soften those a little bit if we find they're a little bit too abrupt. The next thing you can do is go into the spill suppression area and you can apply some desaturation in order to remove any reflection of green that might appear on the skin tone. Now I can see just a little bit of green reflecting on the right hand side there. So I like to bring the slider all the way up to the top where it becomes black and white and then gradually bring it back into color until I can see the skin tones looking more natural. So I've had to take that up to a value of 70 to completely eliminate the green tone. And then you'll need to apply some color correction to give your subject matter a more natural look or to give you the right lighting tone depending on how you shot it. Now the color correction tool in the ultra key I don't really like, it's not flexible enough. I like to use the Lumetri color key. So I'll go into my effects panel and I'll type in Lumetri. In fact, I'm going to use a speed look provided by Premiere just to make this very quick for this tutorial. And I'm going to use the SL Gold Tobacco 5D Lumetri look. That's gonna give me a much more natural looking skin tone. And this has been applied directly beneath my ultra key. So there's my original skin tone. You can see some redness in the skin. And here it is now with the Adobe Lumetri Color SL Gold Tobacco look in order to provide a more pleasing skin tone. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. If you do, make sure you hit the notification bell next to it and you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one, bye for now.